Hey guys, all right. Well, uh, as of last night, we released the fan film Tilt a World, and here's the guy behind the magic um, who made me look better than I could ever possibly be. Uh, Jason Spriggs, uh, or as some of you guys may know him as, uh, Mr. Raygun. So, uh, <laughs> you kind of reminded me of Donkey. You, you kind of reminded me of Donkey Kong there, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, uh, <clears throat> good morning, this, everybody. Good morning. How many people we got on, Vance? Right now, we have three. So. <laughs> three. I'm not going to take that personally because it is Monday and it's a work day. And contrary to popular belief, unlike myself, some people still have jobs. So <laughs> it's okay. Like Van said last time, <laughs> you can watch it on the reruns. But I hope those of you who come in here or are in here, uh, come in and, and, and join the t join the conversation uh, later on. Right, Vance? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a, that's the wonderful things about uh, YouTube is like, once you put it out there, then people go back and backtrack because I've had people who couldn't make it the first time and then they go back and watch like the first two or first three. And then they're like, man, I can't wait for the next one. So, I mean, that's, you know, right. that's the wonderful thing of YouTube is, you know, it's uh, kind of like the, the modern day blockbuster video. They can go rent the stuff whenever they want for free, you know? So, uh, you know, good thing about that. So, um, exactly. so let, let's let's delve into you um and what was your experience like on on working on tilt -a world because i assume everyone who has seen or everyone who's here i would assume has seen last night's tilt -a world and if not you know stop this go watch it then come back and and, and watch or watch it a later time but um film we're going to yeah. be talking about mostly today is, is tilt -a world what was what was your experience on on that it was awful. I mean, truly, truly awful. Um, no, no, it was great. Because uh, I always love it when you uh, you go, okay, got this story. Okay, story's very simple, straight, straightforward. And you go, you know, can you do this? And and can you do that? And can you do the other? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then you turn around, how do I how, how do I do that? How am I going to do that? Yeah, I can do that. How the hell am I going to do that? So it was, um, it was another one of those projects, and uh, which are all always, always exciting and keep your chops up. Like I said, I got laid off from my um, the events company I work with, uh, work for in uh, June, July, something like that. The furlough turned into a <laughs> done, and uh, so working on uh, with Vance and uh, Greg Mitchell, who also works with Vance, and a couple of other people that kept my editing chops uh, sharp. And you know, otherwise I. I don't know what I'd be doing, but um, um, so yeah, it was. Uh, and 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 sometimes it's not even, not even the effects. Some I'll I'll use this as an example, and I would like to pick your brain on this actually, because sure. usually it's like Vance just goes here, Jason, go, and there's not a lot of back and forth. There's not a lot of table readings or <laughs> you know co concepts, you know, animatics, any of that. It's no budget productions, folks, you know? So, um, so Vans just says, go, and I go. But so in the beginning of, for example, Tilt a Whirl, there's a, um, and kind of like the beginning of 11th hour, there's this rather long monologue setting the scene, setting the tone, setting the story up. And um, like in 11th hour, uh, yeah, it's like a 90 second long thing, which you originally said, I want to do the beginning of Star Trek three, you know, where it's, where it's monochromatic blue and a small screen and, and it, as it plays out, you know, the funeral scene, it gets bigger and bigger and then fully saturated. I'm like, yes, cool. Let's do that. And then as I did that, I'm like, it's too long. It's too, I mean, what you're saying is important. You know, it's not like you can cut any of that, but it's just like, okay, get on with it. Get on with it. Get on with it. So that's why I went and, made those shots from other ships and other stations and other locations that Menard had touched or been involved with or influenced. Right. And right. then it became that. Now it, now you're, now you're invested. Hopefully if I've done my job right now, you're, 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 you're listening to what he's saying and the visuals are re reinforcing that. So back to tilt a whirl. Um, you had a captain's log, traditional captain's log, nothing weird about that. Wasn't particularly long, but there was nothing to put behind it. So what was your intent originally when you wrote that? What was going to um, be there? Nothing. <laughs> just black, just stars. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
like that's like 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 Greg 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 Mitchell will tell you, I am the king of like no thought. Um, and when this is why when I I tell people I'm like I give my editors a lot of freedom. Um, you do. It's 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 one of the things of like because I haven't thought that far ahead. Um, and a lot of it is, um, I, I'd like to say stroke of genius, but I, I prefer to say what it really is, which is laziness. Um, I, I really haven't thought that far ahead. Um, cause it could be either I'm sitting at my desk or I'm walking down a hall or I'm sitting on a toilet. Like it really doesn't matter what the captain's log is. It's just we need the captain's log to be whatever it could be in front of the CGI. Um, could be a still picture of the ship. Um, it could be a picture of a planet. Like it, it, it really doesn't matter to me. It's more of, okay, we've got the captain's log. Here we go. Let's delve in. So when I get to you and you've got this entire CGI layout of what it is, um, there was the only thing I think was with the opening sequence. I wanted the, the Eobard scene because I had, we needed to kind of bookend the film with that, with opening with Eobard and then closing with Eobard because that those two scenes were from the scribbler. And I wanted this yeah. film to include those because I wanted it to connect with that because the scribbler was the story of Eobard's background and, and Eobard's telling that through flashback. So I thought this film very much is connected with that, but it's also going, it's telling that story, but going forward. And whereas Scribbler was telling that story from a, a looking back point of view. So this back is filling yeah, in yeah. the gaps. Um, so you did, you you filled in that, that gap wonderfully uh, for the captain's log. Um, but Greg Mitchell will, you know, he can attest to, um, you know, he'll, he'll, you know, he'll, we'll get to the after credits of a scene and he'll be like, dude, that was really badass. So, so what, where are we going from here? Like, what, how are you going to, how are you going to conclude that? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not like you go tell the story. <laughs> I'm, 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 and I think I've told you that a couple of times where you're like, what, what was, how are you going to end that? And I'm like, I'm not, I just, you know, to me, it's always about the hook and you know, get the audience involved, you know. Um, and sometimes, like, very rarely do I ever, like, follow up on something unless it's like, a you know, an overarching story arc. But, like, for me, like, the, the after credits, the cliffhanger is always like, man, that's really cool. But, but a lot of the time, like, <laughs> and I feel like it's always whenever Greg is like, dude, how cool <laughs> is that? You know, like, I always feel like with him, it's, it's always kind of like with you where it's like, I, I'm drawn up. I got a blank, nothing, you know. So uh, for you, that well, you you made that seem more magical than you know. For me, it was just a captain's log. For you, that was gold, you know. Well, thanks. I, I I'm yeah. I'm I'm um, I'm a great one for. Um, I think I'm a great one for uh, interpreting other people or helping other people realize what they need or where they want to go, as opposed to my own stuff, which never gets done. Um, uh, much, much easier working with people than, but, but, uh, anyway, yeah. So the, um, well, I mean, on this one, the captain's log was, the, the, was, I think it was important. You say you didn't know what was, what was underneath it, but it was kind of, it, it was kind of on the page. Everything you were saying was talking about the Melbourne and the new engines of the ship, et cetera, et cetera. Now, could I have put that um, with the with the shot of you just sitting there? I had a really long shot of you just sitting there contemplating before you pick up the quad lithium. You know, could have put it there. Somebody else might have put it there. But again, is that interesting? Can we do better? And I know there's no budget productions, but I don't care if it's we owe money productions. There's always there's always an opportunity to make something better even if you don't have any money or lots of extras and all that stuff you know what i mean so you just take what's on the page you go what does this represent what's the context of this and i mean saying rocket science um you characterize what's being said visually derp so i thought well he's talking all about this they're about to leave earth leave space dock let's make a space dock you know um and i think we're all giant fans of the um the rather protracted 
uh, dry dock scene in Star Trek: The Motion Picture. So I wanted to ape that, but but not as long because because it would have <laughs> that, that's as long as the whole episode. Uh, but I love it, Starship porn, you know. Um, but it just made sense, and and uh, 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 and my CG, everybody I know. I'm not Sam Cockings or Darren Docterman or any of them. It's just, you know, but neither, you know, none of our actors are Oscar caliber either, but we're telling a story. So if you can get beyond the details, um, then, um, you know, the story plays it. You lose yourself. It's like when re somebody recasts a, a famous character in a movie and you're all, oh man, that's going to take me out of the movie. And you sit down and you watch the movie and three minutes, this character, this new actor is playing the character in three minutes. You're like, all right, unconsciously. All right, yeah, and you and you get on with the story. And I, I, I hope it's the same. I think it's the same way with your films. Is that people kind of, hopefully, over a couple seconds, just go, okay, it's not, it's not a Cauley film. It's not Star Trek Continues. It's not Discovery. It's not a movie. It's what it is. And let the story wash over you rather than the detail, well, right? And that's, but, but that, but that's giving, but that's not giving you the credit. I, I feel you, you deserve. Um, huh. like looking at, cause I saw the, the, right. the shot. Of, what's that now? I said, you're right. <laughs> uh, like I, I, I feel like, cause I saw the, the, you know, I I've seen the, the shot of the ship, like, uh, after the, uh, credits roll. Um, and it's just a shot of the ship. You hadn't put the warp effect in it or anything. Um, and I was just impressed by that. Cause I was like, cause you can still see like the little miniature stuff inside the, the, the ship and whatnot. And, and like, to me, like those things never really matter, but like, I appreciated that type of effect. You know, I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, and then, you know, when you sent me the final thing and the ship's going at warp and I was <clears> like, <throat> Oh, like, you know, it, it's, it's those type of things. Um, that, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. Like we don't have the, the large scope and budget for, for something, you know, of, of the, the caliber that others might, but I, I feel like, you know, as I've said before, if, if, if worse came to worse, you know, I would be like, Hey guys, here's my ship, you know, and, and you'd yeah. still see the hand, <laughs> you know, cause I, I'm not no, no, that. Put your hand lower. The At least put your hand under the frame. There we go. There you go. We can get there away with go. that. <laughs> um, but like, you know, the, the, the thing about it is, um, you know, I, I think you I think you do really good with with what you have. And I, I think that's I think that's the same thing with with like the actors we have. Like, I mean, looking at my door over there. You know, everybody, you know, if you look close enough, you can see it's it's just a door that I painted and you can see the the the. Um, the, the brackets on the wall that, that have it open, you know, nobody, no, nobody really, when they think about it, believes that the door opens like this. But again, you're watching a no budget production, you suspend your disbelief and go, okay, I, I, I buy it. You know, um, so I think that what you bring in, in terms of like the CGI and visuals, it's like you, you help sell the story that we're telling. It's like when we watch, you know, TOS, like everybody knows, like when you sit there and watch those, um old type effects we know what they are we know what we're watching we know what we're getting into and it's like when you watch one of my films we know what we're getting into and you help sell that um and you you help sell it well um i don't think i've seen anybody complain about the opening that. sequence what's that now no that's that's the stuff i enjoy is that 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 minutia i mean to the great you're talking about the door behind you i actually took because vance took like several photographs we had to see we had to uh, uh Chroma and green screen and uh, Jillian uh, as Spangler at the um, in the end uh, the post credit sequence where she comes in and talks to Menard and Menard's well I'm not going to spoil it go watch it but uh, so one thing we had to make them appear as if they were in the same place at the same time which they were not um, I know the green screen is it's better than some I think it's good enough for uh, maybe a weather report. It's not industrial light and magic or anything, but uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> but no, it, it works pretty good. <clears throat> the eye lines. The important thing was the eye lines. You know, she looking at Vance, is Vance looking at her? If we get that, then we're good, right? Um, but when she comes in, I really wanted to show her walking in because there's only one shot in this. No, no, sorry, two shots: uh, a close-up of view, a side close-up view, and a side wide of view. There's not a lot of place to go edit-wise, you know. So. Um, 
I really wanted to show her coming in. And I'm, I'm always a great one for building out. You know, it, it, it could be very claustrophobic in an advanced film if you don't think, how can I make this bigger? You know, if, if, if necessary, if it's just a David Mamet, two people talking in a room, then you don't bother. But, but, you know, if you want to, if you want to bring some scope to it, if you can, then do. Uh, and so I wanted to show her coming in from the hallway. I wanted people walking in the background, but I didn't have time, but so I created, created the background and then uh, I took your doors and I just cleaned them up a bit, got rid of, the, got rid of the hinges, you know, got rid of the, got rid of the dodgy, uh, the dodgy paint line in the, in the middle. What? Yeah, I know. I know. Royce I is going to be Royce is going to be very upset by hearing you call it that. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, Royce. very Royce. hard. All right, come and find me in fifteen years. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so um, and then you know, step uh, made the door separate things and then animated them and then back so background that plate doors Jill poop and then you cut quick enough. That's the trick in this is to cut. Don't hang on anything very long where people can go, oh, meh, meh. you know, you just do it enough where it serves the story, it serves the purpose of the shot, and then fucking cut and, and move on. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of that's that. I do a lot of that. Professionals do a lot of that. Um, so, um, but where was I going? So that was the door. Yeah, I was talking about the door. That was a long segment for a door, wasn't it? Anyway. Well, I'll tell you, that, the, I'll tell you the, the thing I get a thrill out of um, is, is seeing – uh, Spangler walk through the doorway and seeing how far back it goes because it reminds me of when I was on yeah. uh, when I was on race set and we just ran down the hallway because <laughs> it's like it goes on forever. I mean, you've been at Neutral Zone Studios, which uh, it's anybody at home, yeah. which, any, which anybody at home, if you guys haven't stopped by uh, Neutral Zone Studios, uh, taking a look at Ray's, like I encourage you guys. Um, it's it's one of the best sets out there. Uh, support the studio. Um, you know, uh, I think he has uh, is on YouTube page that you were pimping out the other day uh, to go support. Yeah, there was a there was a live event yesterday. Uh, Dreadnought yeah. Dominion was shooting, so they did a live kind of behind the scenes of that. I think they had some audio issues, unfortunately. But they're doing another thing, uh, another fan appreciation weekend on the thirtieth. Just real right. quick, with and Vic Vic Mignon is going to be there, and it, you can attend it virtually, or you can go there in person. Autographs, photo ops, history of the him shooting his show, and how they built painstakingly built this this uh, accurate uh, set. You know, uh, right. all that. So, so uh, look for that January 30th. Um, yeah, just go to neutral zone studios, uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, but that's one thing that that seeing your your shot of the hallway, like it really reminded me of of the first time I walked down Ray sets because it's it, it 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 goes on forever. And, you know, it's that's one of the things you don't realize when you're in in the scope of something so large, like either the engine room um, or the hallway is just how large these things go. And you don't realize it when you're watching the TV show, cause you know, you're not paying attention to that. You're paying attention to the actor or, you know, whatever's going on in the scene. But when you're just sitting there in, you know, that world and you have a chance to kind of take it in. Um, so for me, it, unintentional nostalgia you know just looking at her walk in and seeing the hallway and, and how far back it goes and i'm like that's you know i i got kind of goosebumps so i was like that's my ship you know um so yeah i, 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 I you know it's funny, you should, <clears throat> it's funny because i'm a big nostalgia whore as well so if i can ever you know easter egg something or just okay re re uh, reference something but it's funny because that backdrop i created was just the it was uh, first it was just panels you know the hallway panels with the with a little divider, a little, uh, you know, uh, uh, silver tape divider. Uh, uh, and I put a red alert, uh, I put a red alert light up here, you know, it wasn't going, it was just there. And I thought, ah, it's a bit flat, man. It's just like flat, 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 you know? Um, so I'm like, so I added that hallway, tried to match the lighting, did a little bit of shallow focus just because it's back there and, you know, she's up here. And I just moved the whole thing over. And I'm like, okay, now we've got depth, you know, now we can see that we've got the wall, but we've also got that corridor next to it. And then we've got her coming through and then the door. So it's layers, you know, um, but uh, that wasn't the hardest thing to do on, on th this particular movie. <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah. You know? What was, what was, um, <clears throat> when I came to you and said, 
So, Jason, I want to do our our version of the Phantom Zone. <laughs> what was your what was your idea? You know, what went through your mind when when I asked you that? What the hell does he want to do the Phantom Zone for? That's Superman. What? Why? 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 <laughs> He wasn't doing the Phantom. At first, I got very excited actually because I thought you were talking about the original Donner, nineteen seventy-eight. You know, with the with the mirror. You know, the, help us, forgive us. You know, uh, I'm like, oh, I could have some fun figuring out how to do that. And then, and then he goes, no, 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 Smallville. I went, oh. no, I didn't, I didn't do that. So, um, <laughs> he, he, so he showed me, a, he showed me a clip, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, it's just, it's just a kind of a soft focus bleach bypass blown out kind of semi-monochromatic blue type thing and you know uh, with this sound 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 often sells stuff more than even even the visuals you know sometimes and then when they work together then you're cold um so yeah we did that little it, it literally was what i just said that, that i have some filters in in premiere pro uh, uh magic bullet looks sorry my cat slept too close to me last night, so my eyes all, um, I'm allergic. It's dead now. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, yeah, I just ran it through a, a couple of filters with magic bullets, uh, magic bullet looks and, and something else. And, uh, okay, boom, there's the look. And then I took, then I took the, um, that classic planet sound effect, you know, from the old, from the, from TOS, just that warbling, ethereal, wine you know and then and then layered that with about three or four other things with an undertone of of with an undertone of voices there's voices I, running backwards what huh? i just like your dance jad there i i want to put that in a film that's that's you know that yeah you know, the wobbly that's <laughs> did i do that that's yeah 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 it's you know, yeah. yeah we can do that we can make that happen i can do that Go all day ahead. honey uh, mm. <laughs> You're like for the right no, price. For the I am still getting a job. <laughs> for any price, um, <laughs> right, right now. Um, so, so yeah, it's all about. I mean, with my stuff, since I'm not, I'm not a master of special effects or CG or anything. You know, uh, I do a lot of layering of things to to make them happen. There might be simpler ways of doing what I do. What do I? What I ultimately accomplish, but. It's how I know. So it's a lot of layering, a lot of alphas, if it's visual, and a lot of layering um, of, of, of sound um, tracks. So yeah, that was about four or five different tracks, voices running backwards, that planet sound from Star Trek uh, with an extra echo, a couple of other things. Same with uh, when you disappear in the, in the ready room and when you reappear. That was like a half a dozen different sounds. Well, it was probably four sounds. Then you gave me the tilt the actual tilt world sound, you know? And I plopped that on at the end and like that gave it the extra little punch of appearing and disappearing. Um and the same when the when the I needed a transition. I needed a transition between because if I just kept cutting between Quincy and the tilt a world world, tilt a world world, um it would be a bit jarring but if i just like dissolved to white on quincy and then woke up in the tilt -a it would look like quincy was going to the tilt a wall you know what i mean so there was a there was a narrative uh, tool i needed to come up with that got us from a to b uh, after i established that then i would just cut back and forth i think for the most part um but you had to establish that that's that's how it worked that, that narratively how and that's how it worked so i came up with that star with the star field the stars, the stars kind of start doing this, and then sources of light, as if the tilt -a world was everywhere in the universe, right? It, it, it's in some fashion for different people, and and so the light start doing that and getting growing, growing, growing until the central and just engulfs everything, and now whoom, that's where we are. That's where you are, you know. See, um, and, that's and, that, and that's the thing, like that. That really that one aspect you don't think you need it until you see it and then you're like god how is how that that's exactly how it should be um yeah. and that's that's one of the reasons why like i said when i when i tell an editor you know you know pass it off to them and and, and you give them the freedom to do what they want to do you know you don't micromanage them like that's the type of stuff that 
you know, you, you, you get, you know, and you're just like, man, I mean, that just makes you, <laughs> that makes me look good. Cause it's like, man, that makes the film look that much better. Cause it's, it's such a great visual effect. And again, like you don't realize you need it until you see it. And then you're like, damn, that, that looks really good. Cause it sells, um, it sells the fact that you're like, you're, you're morphing into a trans dimension. You're, you're, you're leaving this plane. Like it, it tells you you're not in fucking Kansas anymore, <laughs> you know? Um, right. And exactly, it's, yeah. it's, it's such a great effect, you know, cause you're again, like when you, when you see like the stars kind of, you know, space is kind of bending, like you're not really sure yes. what you're looking at, but you know, it's not exactly. right. And I love that. Yeah. Cause it's it's just it's it's a great effect, man. It's a great effect. Yeah, and it and it, thanks the and yeah because if if you just cut from him disappearing to him being there, it, it, it's you're kind of. I think the uh, the transition that Starfield lights transition is kind of the foreplay to get to where you're going rather than just stick it in. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> If you will, <laughs> or won't, um, but you know what I mean. So, um, and there's others. I, I like I like to play with transition. Oh, here's a good one. The the um, where, and the dry dock scene in the beginning, right? So you're giving the log. Menard's giving the log, updating us about what's going on, what's ha what has gone on, and then I needed a passage of time uh, between the fly through and and us leaving in the ship, leaving dry dock. So I just came up with the. Uh, I thought, well, let's just let's do a sunrise, you know, nothing new here. They did a motion picture; it's an old trope. But let's do a sunrise over the Earth. You see the station over here that gradually gets lit up, and you kind of go, "Oh, look, there's a station as the sun comes up," and the music does what it does, transitions there. So that shows passage of time. It also shows, you know, symbolically, very, very on the nose, but um, the sunrise of a new dawn, you know, to, to coin a phrase, uh, possibilities, and all that jazz. And so when we show the, the ship leaving, we kind of know, oh, there's been some time before when we saw the ship, you know, the shuttle pod going to the ship and Menard talking about it. And now it's some hours later and the ship is leaving and boom. So just need that passage of time. So I thought the sunrise was good. The cool thing about that is at the very end, after Menard loses Eobard, yeah, in that little sequence, flashback sequence, we do the opposite. We end with the sunset behind the planet, you know, to kind of say, oh, not so happy, you know, it's the end of a, of a, of a, of a time. So I like, I like book ending things like that. You and you and I talked the other day, or we, we have talked, you, you kind of play fast and loose. Like you were talking about the music that you put on credit sequences and how sometimes you approach the writing or whatever you, you play fast and loose. And I'm, I'm a, I tend to be a purist. I want to cut stuff as close to, even though it's no budget productions or whoever I was working with, you know, if it was a Star Trek film, I just, I want to, I want to give it the structure of an episode so that it kind of feels that much more of Star Trek. You know what I mean? I mean, Star Trek has always, I mean, uh, recent, uh, recent events, notwithstanding structurally, Star Trek has always been a teaser and five acts, right? There's a teaser and four acts, teaser and five acts, I think. So teaser, credits, five acts, you're out, you know? Uh, and even Discovery does that. I mean, they, they're telling a serialized story, but their episodes are still that format, you know? So it, whenever I have an opportunity, I like to do that. And I was so thrilled when you, when you uh, was it Adam, who who did the um, the credit sequence? Joey? Did the, yeah, um, so. it was it was Joey that did it, and then Adam did the music. Yeah, right, exactly. So, so <coughs> great. We've got a we've got a theme now, and we've got a credit sequence. So I can do my teaser, plump in the uh, credit sequence. I wish I had that credit sequence for eleventh hour. I would have put it right after your uh, opening monologue, and then right before the um, the Cardassian Jem'Hadar, you know, uh, 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 face off. Um, but anyway, so I like that, and then. Um, and of course, the uh, yeah, yeah. So the sunrise goes down at the end, and oh, sad, sad. And then roll credits, and I came up with this credit sequence that <laughs> you were not expecting, you, you, which you told me. Uh, but I think was was pretty cool because it was it was more it was more cinematic, it was more um, traditional, shall we say? Yeah, I guess I'm a purist when it comes to Star Trek. 
very much so actually. Um, and then end, you know, and then end on the empty, you know, I had the wormhole and end on the star field. And then rather than just cut to something, let's do the old Star Wars trope where we just crane down on the stars, yeah. and then there's the there's the cut the star, star, and oh, 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 stick around, uh, you know, after credits, uh, post credit sequence. So, um, what was the question? <laughs> You just started talking. I don't think there was a question. I did. Right, no, that's the, <clears throat> that's the uh, that's the that's that that uh, credit sequence was one of the things that that um, you know everybody who's who's seen it like really loved and like you and I had talked like if I had seen um, that credits done um, I probably like like I I think I told you on the phone or, or messaged you on Facebook like I I probably have been like hey can you do this generically. Um, you know, so, you know, every, every editor from the second part of the Constar completed series, you know, the ones from like TOS era can, can do this. Cause sadly I've already got, um, I think I had had three other films like wrapped up, um, you know, by the time we had done this one. So it was kind of like, ah, oh, man, if, if I had known it would be like this, we, we could do that. And I, and I still may at some future point be like, Hey man, can we, can we get that so we can actually do that, you know, and, and, maybe in the final, maybe in the final set of films, you know, next year when I come back, um, we may actually do that, you know, cause it's, it's, it is, you know, and, and, and may hit that format of, Hey, let's, let's do, you know, episodic looking films, you know, um, you know, cause it's like, we've, uh, you know, you don't want to sit in something and, and say stagnant. Um, cause if you look at, you know, my original set of films, they look different than the next set of films and they look different than the Constar continues. And then they look different than Constar completed. Yeah. That was the reason why I wanted, you know, um, a different theme, you know, actual opening credits, um, you know, but, you know, we may for our final one have, you know, episodic looking films. Cause it's like, well, we've done everything else, you know, be, do something a little, just a little bit different, you know, um, but, you know, I, I love giving, you know, you guys the type of freedom um, and just to see, like, well, where do they take it? Because, again, after I, I put all of them in, in, a, in playlists for my YouTube and not including the cameos, I have 95 films made right now. So after that many films, like it, it's not a matter of no, no, it's got to be this way. It's got to be, you know, micromanaged you know, after after that many films, it's like, ah, fuck it. Do it however you guys want to do it. Like, let's see what you guys come up with. Cause I, I don't have all the ideas, you know, you guys come up with good stuff on your own, which apparent by the movie, you know, um, cause you had the idea, you know, I, I wanted to see him you know, a figure in the sky, you know, the phantom. Let's line. talk about Let, Yeah. And let's that's, talk about that. You see that, where that I'm headed? Your, that, my segue. Yeah. Nice, nice job. Um, how did you, how did you, why did you, where did you come up with that? How, how, how did that come out of your head story-wise? Well, well, I'm a, I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of, of Smallville. Um, and obviously this is where um, some inspiration for this episode came from. Obviously the Phantom Zone, I, I wanted to do our take on it. You know, I, I didn't want it to rip off, um, but I wanted to, and that, that was always my, my thing when I was talking with you about it was like, you know, don't, don't, don't duplicate this, you know, do, do our version of it, you know, whatever that is, you know, cause again, my thing is, you know, I don't know what you can do. I don't know what you can't do. Just do our take on it, you know? Me neither. Um, cause again, my, my mentality is always, you know, um, no one's done this before. So no one can tell us this isn't how it's supposed to be. So make it your own, you know? Um, and I'm happy with whatever you can do. Um, so as being a fan in Smallville in the first episode uh, or in the first season um, of episodes, I, I think it's episode eight or episode 15, um, Lex, who's still a good guy in the first season, um, they, they meet a person who can, a, a blind fortune teller who can see the, into the future. And she touches his hand and she sees you know, he's the president of the United States. He sees blood drip or she sees blood dripping on his um, like blood falling from the sky. And and 
you know, skulls all around him. And, and the one thing I thought would have been fucking epic is if he looks off into the distance and sees Superman, or at least the, like the shadowy figure of a super or a man with a cape. You know, because you're seeing allusions to President Lex um, and death all around him, because that's the character. Um, but I thought that would have really cemented, no, Clark is going to be Superman, even in this universe. Um, and this is his destiny to fight Lex. Like, that's, they're, they're, they're on this path. But I thought that one thing in the distance would have really sold, hey, Superman is coming. Um, and so when we did the tilt the world here, I thought that one vision, I thought if we looked off into the distance and saw our, our kind of doomsday ish type, this is what's bringing the destruction, you know, um, that's what was kind of taken from that, that, you know, visually, that's what I saw. It was, man, that one moment I saw in Smallville, um, which didn't happen in Smallville, but that one thing that I thought would have made that kind of just over the top, that would work here because, you know, we're looking at all this destruction around us in the tilt world and, and the what ifs. And we know that there's a phantom war coming. We know that the phantom is loose in the 24th century. And now we're building up to this destroyer of universes. And we've already seen the destruction of um, the mirror universe, um, you know, from him, you know, wiping out the mirror universe. So we know that he's got these, you know, powers. He's got these, these, uh, you know, he's intelligent enough to do it. Like, let's see that, you know, represented in this tilt world, you know, something that, yeah. you know, he, he may not be able to fly in the real world, but here symbolically, this dude's all powerful. This dude would be an. It was, a, har it was a harbinger, harbinger of of fucking awful stuff. Yes. Yeah, you're right. You can't, you can't really fly, but in the tilted <coughs> world, in the in this crazy messed up imagination world, that's that's what represents what it yes. represents. You know. So and yeah, I, you were you were like, I got a green screen now. I, we can do this, right? Yeah. I'm like, and yeah. I and I and I really wanted him kind of looking you know kind of looking around and then all of a sudden he kind of focuses like you you know yeah, we, um we came up with that you because yeah remember i'm like you should you should look down at it just do that dramatic michael bay you know <laughs> thing and um what else there was you there was some constant oh 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 yeah because you were you're like i got the green screen so i can do this all we can do this right and i'm like yeah but only do the wide, do the wide shot of you, you know, the, oh, um, so and, there's another uh, dance. It's going to get you some work, yeah. man. That's, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be freaking meme, meme central. You're going to uh, be on OnlyFans. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, so you, yeah, do the, do the wide on the green and, and try and get the camera low. And I think you stood on something, you stood on a little something. So, yeah. Uh, so that was helpful. I was it, able it, to was, it was it was what Royce uses to brush his teeth with. He stands on it and and yeah, well, whatever works, man. That yeah. If this wasn't no budget production, it'd be ever works production. It, um, it was funny because when I grabbed it from the bathroom, Royce was like, "Are you gonna brush your teeth?" And I'm like, eh, I "Probably should." <laughs> no, I'm gonna conquer the universe. Then I'm gonna that's, brush my teeth. That's um, it. So the, and then the second shot, you know, with the close up where you do the, oh, uh, I'm like, don't shoot that against the green screen. Just just go outside, use the real sky, use the real lighting, and that'll take a step. That'll, first off, it'll look better, and then second, it'll take a step away, you know, one or two steps away from uh, in, in post. So uh, and you got that low, you got that part. When I saw that, I was very happy. I'm like, yes, you got it right. Um, so. <laughs> So, uh, I'm such a dick sometimes. Um, wait, wait, so, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, I just, I just, that was the first time I actually used your tripod in a film <laughs> that you edited. <laughs> that's a story. That, well, that's it's a about story. bloody time. <laughs> Tell the story. Tell the story. So, so in, in, in 11th hour, or, well, no, what was it? What was film was it? That. It was way, way, way back. I'd done a couple of graphics for you, yeah. which I was going to show today on the green screen, but we couldn't make it work. I did some, I did some thumbnails for episodes, 
Yeah. Uh, and then, and then I said, can I edit one of your things? And he gave me, he gave me something, uh, principles and personalities and then wonder wall and, uh, which are fine, but I was watching some other episodes and I'm thinking where it was all handheld and the sound was terrible because they were far away. Right. Sure. So, uh, so knowing that I might, this might be doing more. I mean, I wanted to help Vance, but this is also sort of self-serving uh, uh, <laughs> as well. So, so I bought Vance, I bought Vance a tripod for his phone. <coughs> That's right, because remember I had um, – we were trying to do the over-the-shoulder shot of you in the ready room, right? I was yep. trying to build out. I didn't want I didn't, didn't want just this shot, you know? I was like, can we – can we? when you're talking to Sally, can, I need more places to cut to to, you know, add to it. So I'm like, can we do an over-the-shoulder and sort of show your ready room? And you're like, there is no ready room. There's a piece of cardboard and a monitor. I'm like, okay, well, let, let me see what that looks like, you know? So you took a picture. And it was literally, you know, it's like, and this is not unusual. I mean, there's plenty of uh, set extension that's done in Hollywood and stuff. So I'm like, we can do this. So I'm like, put, okay, put your camera on a tripod as far back in the room as you can go. You're like, well, I can't go very far back. I'm just as far back as you can go. Just put it on a tripod. I don't have a tripod. Like, okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Put it, put it on a fucking lunchbox on a stool. I don't care. Stick it in a piece of bread uh, or in a loaf of bread, whatever. So at the, uh, so anyway, we, we, got the, we, we got the shot, and we did the scene extension. And actually, if you go and watch Principles and Personalities, um, there's a great shot over the shoulder of, of, of Vance's set, which is literally how much? Uh, 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 six foot by four foot? Oh, um, cardboard and then desk. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's about. I'd say it's about maybe four. I'd say it's maybe five foot by, yeah, maybe five by four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it, it's got the electrical tape for paneling and stuff. So basically, took that, took a frame of that, took it into Photoshop, and then just literally painted, built the rest of the, you know, that corner of the room. Added a, a monitor with L cars. Um, added some detail to his desk to make it look less kitchen table and more, you know, Starfleet. Um, and this, and then some fake lighting, virtual lighting, and uh, yeah, and we, we've never used that again. We have we? We don't, we don't nope. use it. Either. So, anyway, the point being is like, like, okay, if we're going forward, dude, you need a tripod, especially if you're going to do any kind of effect shots, you got to lock them down. We can always make the camera look like it, it's moving after the fact, but if you want something going on over here, a, a, a fake monitor on the wall, or or a, a guy flying, whatever, it's got to be a lockdown shot. <clears throat> Also, with the sound, it was that episode where you and a blue uniform person was walking through the forest, and it, you know, it was evident you had like car headlights over here, which is genius. Um, so we could see you, we just couldn't hear you. No, it is, it was genius. Um, and and uh, so I'm like, okay, let me get him a couple, let me get him a couple of lavalier mics to put so people can just plug that into their phone, you know. And put it in their back pocket, you know, do it up through their put it up up here so you can't see it. And they can just hit, you know, action, just hit hit record, put it in your pocket, and then do the thing. So you can both talk, 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 talk. So you they take the footage from the camera you're shooting on, and then you take those people's little recorder files, and then I could sync them all up in uh, in Premiere. And you and nobody would be, you know, people would think, oh, you had boom mics out there and all kinds of flashy stuff. It's like, no, no. So, so anyway, yeah. continue your story. So, it, so you you finally it's, got him. It's it's, a, it's a funny because the uh, the closest thing we had to, um, <laughs> and if you go back and watch the film, the best things, um, we're in the middle of a field at, at the beginning of the episode. We're on a planet, um, or. It, it, maybe three or four minutes into the episode, we're on a planet. It's me and two other guys. And it's right before we find Eobard. And mm -hmm. the way I got, the way I got the camera to stay steady there. And this is how I was doing things at the time was I would drive my car into the field 
And then I'd put my Batman lunchbox on top of my car and I'd set my phone right there. Like, and that's how I was always doing things is that, yeah. that goddamn lunchbox was like my tripod. Cause I'd always set my phone against it, you know? So like, I got your, I got your tripod sent to me and I'm looking at it and I'm going, what, what is this? Like, <laughs> it doesn't even have a cape on it. Like my lunchbox does like, Oh, this is weird. You know? So like, I, I really want to go find like a oh, cape and put it on my tripod. <laughs> <laughs> but no like it's because it's it <clears throat> uh i forgot uh when we shot 11th hour like we shot break free and that had a tripod like we used the tripod on that pretty regularly but then we started getting to the 11th hour and i'm like okay we're running out of time and we've still got to go to the other sets to shoot fuck this, let's go. Like, so I just grab the camera and I'm like, nope, it's going to be all handheld. It, it, it's going to look all handheld ish. Let's, let's go. Let, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't use the tripod on that. And ironically, that's the film that Jason's editing. And, but on that one, and we'll come back to that because there is a punchline, but on 11th hour, it, you didn't need it. And thank God you didn't use the tripod because that was a very kinetic, um, episode there was a lot going on the ship was rumbling and stuff so a little movement is okay i i actually added a movement to that in 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 post uh, more shaking mm -hmm. and if anybody wants to know how to do that just contact me it's pretty cool it's pretty cool um and um but the good thing about you just running and gunning that and 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 not try not not locking it down was because i needed Again, because the transitional shots, the shots between shots or the performances between performances, there's a lot of times where you would just, okay, um, Victoria, say this. Okay, perfect. I'm going over here now to Yaffa. Okay, now say this. There were so many opportunities, there's so many times when I took that moment where you're just moving from one setup or one shot to another, and I used them as shots in the, because it it heightened the 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 emotion, the movement, urgency, yeah, Certain, urgency, exactly. So so some sometimes I would reverse them if you know, um, and like there's a cup, there's a shot of, of of Mary Jane, um, I think she looks, she either looks this way and then back to her monitor, or she's looking at her monitor and back to it. But I needed her to do one or the other, so I just reversed it, and then the camera went over here. It was like that's perfect. It went to yeah, that was perfect. And so there was a lot of those moments, and even the, the shot where I think I've said this before, what when Victoria gets shocked, yeah, on that um, on the on the bridge there, um, there's a there's a shot from the far right. So uh, the bald guy, I don't remember his name, forgive me. He was a ben. navigator. What? Ben. Ben. He's at navigation. Victoria's at helm, and and you're you're walking her through how to act getting shocked and and she's just she's kind of being funny and just like pantomiming like this but because i didn't want the whole thing of her it was a straight on shot where she's getting shocked uh, and then kind of does that uh, 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 and I, I wanted again i wanted to build it out so i started over ben's over ben's shoulder and you can see her and i just do like two seconds of the shot starting and her hands kind of go like that and, th and then i cut to the straight on and then I cut to Greg reacting with this arcing light in the corner and then back to her. So so rather than just one shot, it happens down. It's boom, 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 you know. But the point of the story is a lot of those shots of you just <coughs> still run, running the camera between shots were incredibly valuable, you know. Right. So – so I would say keep and because it was just it, it was just the bridge, it was a standing set, no special effects. We're not we're not keying any anything or whatever. So it worked fine. But, oh, but then, we, be, hold on just a second. Uh yeah. Dee, Dee Myers uh asks uh Jason Spriggs, Mr. Reagan Media, how how do we get a hold of you? Um nine seven six inches uh no um uh well on facebook yeah just uh yep. dm me yeah, on I've, facebook i've got your i've got your facebook already in the description um your facebook link should be there 
Um, so if you want to, uh, Dee Dee Myers, if, if uh, you click on the description link, uh, his Facebook should be there. Just send him a friend request. Uh, he's pretty open. Um, so he sh should be good. So but go ahead sure. with your story. Friends are good. Uh, I was done. <laughs> so um, no, to, uh, to... <clears throat> I was talking about so... the tripod. So we moved on yeah. from 11th hour. It worked out because there was no tripod, but you were you were going to say how I think you were going to say how from that point on. I yeah, always for, seem to get footage. We, we shot we shot every single day like the, the, the day we got together to shoot. I think we shot like four or five films uh, for the 23rd century Constar people. Um, and it was last October. And the you know every other film i was behind the camera because i wasn't in any of those films because i again all the 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 reasoning by doing all the films was you know maybe have menard be in a scene or a, a clip or on the monitor but you know keep them out of um you know i don't really want to be in the films but but tilt the world is very much a, a menard film um <clears throat> so you know that one i i passed the camera off to my friend drew <laughs> and was like here you go man I never put it who, on the tripod. Who was, seizures, who was having seizures that day? <laughs> oh, no tripod. God. No tripod. Fuck it. So, hey, uh, let's give this one to Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, yeah, like the only, the, the only one. Jason messaged me. Was like, hey, man. Make sure next time you use the tripod. I'm like, what are you talking about? I did fucking use the tripod. Like, I, I I sat there the whole time, like, making sure the camera. And then I thought, I was like, oh, wait. No, I was in front of the camera. I, I passed it to Drew, who's like, because like, my room is so small. Like, <laughs> like Drew's in the corner, like, like this with the camera. Like, okay, I got it, Vance. Yeah. I got it. Because, again, we're in the ready room, which looks, I mean, it looks small on screen anyway. But when you think about like it's it's pretty big, considering like what we have to work with, like and it's in a small room, so it's a small room that looks big in a small room. Um, and you got <laughs> you know a guy who's trying to make the captain not look like a fat ass, you know, <laughs> and he's trying, he's like, mm, okay, I'm, I, I got it, and then we're trying to get another guy walk in the frame. You know, and again, we're trying to make it look organic, you know. Um, <laughs> that, so, wasn't so, that wasn't so bad, Vance. It was it was the um, – I was thinking when you started talking, I was thinking of the actual tilt-a-whirl where you're walking. There's like a three-minute sh shot of you walking going, hello, hello, you know, that. And the camera was just like, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> oh, that guy. Uh, oh, so, that <laughs> so we fixed that. It was I did some uh, image stabilization and I cut the thing down by having dissolves to make it more ethereal and ghostly and dreamy and stuff. So that worked fine. That was okay. But uh, yeah, the stuff in the ready room. No, he did he did fine with that. You could tell it was handheld, but it was that wasn't bad. The problem with that was you sh you shot a two shot and you're doing ad hoc dialogue. Okay, now you say this. Okay, now I'm going to say this. Okay, what's my line here? Okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now you say this. So every time there's a you say this or what's my line or whatever, what am I supposed to cut to? Because it's a it's one shot of two of you, right? And we all have these days. I mean, I've gone to places and go, fuck, I didn't even get an establishing shot. What was I thinking? You know, the, 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 we all do this, you know, or, 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 or you get home, you go, oh, I double tapped the, uh, the camera. I didn't even record because I fucking double, double tap. You know, we all have days. So I, I get this footage and I'm watching dialogue. Okay, dialogue's fine. It's good. Performance is good. Okay, where's where's the where's the uh, that's the coverage. Where's where's the uh, where's the close-ups? <laughs> no, no, really, really, just two shot uh, that keeps stopping. So I had to, <laughs> and it's so, <laughs> so I had to push in. I had to push in on on Vance. Yeah. Only to a degree because you weren't. I don't think it was 4K because it wasn't. Yeah. So I had to push in on Vance enough to get Quincy. <coughs> what was the actor's name? That's Matt. Chris. Uh, Chris. 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 Um, so I pushed it on uh, Hank, and then and then pushed it on uh, Chris. So now I had at least 
two shots to kind of play uh, three shots, the two shot, the close up of, of you and the shot close up of Chris. But it was still difficult. It would have been nice to have an over the shoulder or a direct shot at Chris. In fact, there's a couple times where there's a later scene with a front shot of Chris that I kind of cannibalized for a couple yeah. of things. So it looked like I had more angle. You know? I don't, uh, I don't, it, it, cracks, it cracks me up, dude. When, when, like when Minari disappears and it's like that, oh shit moment. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Like, and he also goes too. Um, so, so I, uh, well, and that was the thing, because it wasn't a lockdown shot. You know, I mean, you were very, you were very good at, at, at sort of, okay, if you got the shot, and now you sort of move, or try not to move the chair, and then step out of the shot. It's like, okay, Chris, go. I've disappeared. All right, so that, that was fine, and he was kind of like holding this. You know this look, you know, yep. uh, or the position. Uh, so it was all good, but the camera was moving because it was handheld, you know. So, um, but it's okay. It's such a quick, you know. Plus, I did the whole kind of almost yep. like a cue, cue yep. thing that it, it it gets so bright that you can't really tell the transition. It's yep. not bad. I think the one, I think the one of you coming back is not quite as good as the one leaving. Or I could have those backwards, but either your, way, it your, works. Your eyes don't. Your eyes don't really see the imperfections that that we we captured on camera, and that that's one of the things you know um, that I appreciate working with. You know, not only yourself, but with my other editor Trey, or with my uh, editor Greg. Um, you know, they they go above and beyond. Um, and like I said, they, they always make me look a lot better than I am because, you know, I mess up an awful lot, you know, um, or, you know, like you said, you know, I don't get the coverage that I need all the time, you know, and in a perfect world, like, cause at, at that point, like we shot Tilt the World, that was our last film of the day. Um, and I, I'd, we still hadn't shot any of the outside stuff yet. Um, so my, my mentality was let's hurry up and get the, the, the ready room stuff done. And, and also we had a rewrite because originally um, the person in the ready room at the beginning was supposed to be Spangler. Um, and the actress who was supposed to be Spangler didn't show. So we had, you know, I was like, okay, who am I going to get to do this? Okay. Let me rewrite the dialogue to be someone else. So we can talk about Spangler so that it makes sense for the end of the film. Cause I don't want to just introduce someone at the, in the after credits to just be a throwaway, you know, um, and originally uh, Spangler on the intercom was supposed to be Rankin. So uh, again, I had to do a, a small rewrite. Um, and then we were getting, you know, again, at the end of the day, and we still had to shoot the, the uh, you know, the outdoor stuff. Um, <clears throat> and again, um, you know, it's one of those things where like you, you made me look, you know, and made everyone else look like a hundred times better than what, you know, we, we should have, you know, um, for, for all those people. Well, I, don't, are, you, I mean, you have to give yourself some credit too, because, because, okay, sure. You know, if, if somebody was to look at the raw footage of Chris and you and, you know, Chris is doing his thing, eh, not quite, you know, try this, you know, new mistakes, just like, you know, the fucking business. And then you, and you're, and you're going, blah, 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 blah. Okay. What's my line? Okay. Blah, 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 blah. But when you cut it all together, your acting is fucking good. You know what I mean? It's good performance in, in, in context, you know? And that, at the end of the day, nobody needs to see all the, the shit we're talking about now or exposing, well, you know? It, it's well, the I, product. I do have, well, I do have, uh, like, coming up, I do have, because uh, um, a, a lot of the people find, like, the, the stuff that you're seeing or, you know, the stuff that you see, um, like, they, they really enjoy seeing, like, you know, that type of stuff. And they, they ask, like, well, how do you do these stuff? How do you make the films? So um, to all of you guys that are, are, are paying attention at, you know, um, you know, to the channel that, that, that tune in, um, I would say it's behind the scenes, but it's it's not necessarily behind the scenes. It's it's, it's the clips that I send my editor. You, I'm going to start posting those um because instead of just deleting them from my google drive i you know once the film's released i'm just going to start releasing you know some of those um not all of them but you know some of them 
um, to let you guys kind of see like, hey, this is how we make a fan film. Because, um, you know, for everyone that says, those yeah, a- what's that now? You should make those a Patreon tier no, accessible I, thing. I, I'll, I'll never do Patreon or, or anything like that. I, I don't really, no. I don't want to do any of this for money. Um, but Because the, then it wouldn't be no budget production. You just don't want to change the name. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm that lazy dude. That's that's it. that's it. If I had someone to change the name, I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, no, um, no, I don't. I, I, my my mentality has always been like, I I want this to be something where, um, you know, my heart's in the right place, and I I always want to be just, you know, hey, here's here's this. You know, I I never have to to charge for anything. Um, but uh, you know that that's one of the reasons why, like, when I do a GoFundMe. Like I, you know, I ask her a certain amount and, and I always get it pretty quickly, um, you know, because I don't ask for Patreon. I don't ask for, you know, an astronomical amount. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I decided instead of because um, a lot of my editors hold on to the footage in case we ever need to go back to it, because especially in advanced film, like we do do those callbacks um, and I hold on to some of the oh. Google Drive stuff myself. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I do plan to about three, uh, you know, two to three times a week release, um, you know, clips. Um, some of them are 30 seconds. Some of them are a minute. Some of them are nine minutes. Um, but, I mean, you'll see the, you know, clips that I send my editors and you'll see us, like, actually um, doing the behind the scenes. So if you want to know how to make a fan film, um, you know, you'll you'll get to see up front um and i've already got those posts scheduled through mid-february um you know about two or three times a week so so. did you want to talk about so you were talking about spangler and and you lost your actress last minute yeah so and speaking of callbacks what did you what did you decide to do well i I had cast someone else to to be Spangler, and I couldn't make that work either. It was right. it was just it was just it was too there was too much time going on uh, between what I could make work and what I couldn't. Um, and then I found another actress, and again couldn't make that work. Um, and again, she was a wonderful um, uh, person. Um, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't make it work. Um, cause again, I'm, <clears throat> I, I understand like these are, are realistic time, ta- you know, you know, family first, uh, job first, but, um, again, I, I have to get films out at a certain point. Like we, we have to, you know, I, I have to get the films out, you know? Um, so if, if things take too long, you know, Hey, either I need to re- you know recast or I need to rewrite or, you know, um, and at, if, a, if the film is filmed at a certain point, um, then I have to recast, you know, otherwise it's a simple matter of a rewrite. And, and as, as you've seen, you know, the Spangler character is a very important character for a story arc that I have. Um, and it's very integral to the Menard character, um, which sets things up for what we've already established for the Constar. So I reached out to you and was like, hey, remember remember a scene we had with Jill, (laughs) like, would she be interested in playing the Spangler character? Cause I, I, you know, kind of have a way to tie this in somewhat. Um, and you said, yeah. And, and, and you were, you blessed me with. (laughs) Yeah. I said, yeah. (laughs) I I said, yeah. (laughs) No, you, 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 uh, you chatted with you were like, well, I'm not sure if she'd be able to. Um, I'm not sure if she'd have the time. Um, I'm sure she'd be interested, just not sure if she'd have the time. And honestly, like I was kind of at that point, I was kind of I wouldn't say panic mode, but it, it probably as close to panic mode as I could be, because I was kind of like, I don't know what I'm gonna really do, because this is now the th- this is now the fourth time that I've cast this part, and it's I mean, what do you do? I mean, is this part just doomed to be? Let me can I can I interrupt? Can I tell you a quick story? Tell you a quick Absolutely. story. This December, right along with the um, we were shooting uh, the first episode of a web series called Retro World, right? Which hopefully is coming. And one actress, 
one location, no dialogue. Okay, there was a there was a script, there was a story, but there was no actual dialogue. A couple of whispers, that's it. There's no monologues, there's no party scenes, people interacting. It's one girl, one location, uh, you know, and uh, no dialogue. I pulled my hair out all through December, trying to make that happen, trying to get cinematographer, this vintage car, the actress, the grip, Mike, cameraman, the uh, fit in with the locations uh, schedule. We could only shoot Sunday because they were closed Sunday. We needed we and we needed a whole day. <clears throat> and um, after the first day, we um, yeah, yeah we we, um, we shot the first day, but we only got the exteriors, the beginning of the movie, the, uh, the end of the movie. So we had to do the interiors. Next few weeks after that, again, one person, one location. One day, and spinning plates, man. I couldn't. I couldn't make it happen. I ended. Up, uh, I ended up having to recast the girl because of her availability. The main. The the main character, actress, uh, got somebody else. And it turned out they couldn't stay the entire day, but which was not her fault. Um, it was. It was me. I didn't understand that at the time. And then we had Hurricane Etta, and then uh, our cinematographer Scott Sullivan got very ill. Very very ill, and. Um, and yeah, it was just one thing after another. And so we had to just push it. And it was for a film festival that was, uh, it was a Rob Meyer Burnett Film Festival, uh, International, the Intergalactic International, Intergalactic Imagination Conference Film Festival. It was supposed to be for that. No problem. You know, shooting November 2nd. We got all month. You know, the deadline was December 2nd, December 1st. So anyway, long story short, too late. Um, yeah, just to do that. One person, one location, no dialogue. Freaking couldn't do it. Yeah. So I totally understand how. And I even had, I even, like I said, we recast, but we already shot the end in the beginning. So I had to write into the narrative why it was a different person when she went into the building. You know what I mean? And because it was kind of a Twilight Zone, other world, weird, uh, psychedelic kind of story, I could make it work. It was kind of, you know, the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, that Terry Gilliam film, uh, Heath Ledger, he died. And so they put in Johnny Depp and uh, and uh, Dumbledore. The guy's playing Dumbledore now, um, and somebody else, he, uh, Jude Law, and somebody else to kind of pick up the pick up the character after Hugh uh, Heath Ledger sadly passed. You know, so we were do we were essentially doing that, but still couldn't make it. Right. So we're supposed to finish that this this month. But the point is, yes, you had to recast four times. You said. Yeah, and yeah. then you get to a point where it's just like I can't do this anymore. I just, you know, it, you know, what do you do? Do you do you give up or do you try one more time? I mean, I probably gave up three times and I kept coming back, you know. Yeah, and um, so well, that's that's just that's that's, 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 that's low indie filmmaking, man. Yeah, that's the that's that's the where that's where I was with with that character because, again, like I have. <sighs> I think I think two films that that are specifically like her oriented um, that are coming up, and then she's a huge part of the Pretender. Um, both both Pretenders, um, like she, she, you know, she has parts to one, and then she's a, an important part of the other. Um, <clears throat> but it's it's one of those things where it's like once you start shooting those, and you label, okay, that's who this person is like you have to stick to it, you know? Um, and that, that's kind of the thing that I fell into is like, I, I have to get this right, you know, cause once we go, it's go time, you know? And, and I, I've done that before where I have a character and then I have to write around, okay, why is this person not here? You know, and that, that's typical in, in filmmaking, but. You could um, always, you could always do the, you could always do the soap opera thing, you know? Yeah. You ever watch the soap no. operas when you were little? It's like the poor the part of Roy Johnson will be played by Jack Smith right. this week. You know, because <laughs> the actor wasn't available or sick or whatever. Well, see, like I, I, I had even toyed around with the idea of because I have alien masks now. I had even toyed around with the idea of fuck it, I'm just gonna make it an alien and maybe have you know, it just have like you know, maybe someone can wear an alien mask, but then I'm like but then if I could have that, like, I might as well just have them be a human being. Like, it's just, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's frustrating because it's like someone just fucking play the part, you know, because um, you need to have that contact. <laughs> just like, 
you know, but uh, well, George, but George is smart with that little with that. George, George is smart with that little. Um, is it his daughter who plays the um, the the science officer on on Antilles? Yeah. Yeah, the little you know, um, and if she wasn't available, just plopping out a mask on somebody, and yeah, you should you should do that. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> so we got but so we got Jill. So we got we got Jill because she had pl played at the end of one of your episodes an old an old message that Menard was looking through, yeah. nostalgically. Yeah, and I I found. Uh, like I, I figured a way to connect it to that message um, for, you know, a later film, um, <clears throat> which, you know, again, it connects to the storyline, makes all of her words make sense, make, you know, um, you know, it, so, you know, it, it, it paints the scene in a different light, but again, it, it makes everything kind of match up, you know? So uh, yeah, we had Jill play Spangler, and you had her on the bridge, you know, she's seen next to the character of Lee, um, you know, and it just, it makes, it makes the, the whole film, uh, you know, it makes it feel like a crew, you know, it makes it feel very full, you know, in a way that, that was I don't fun. Think, that was... I don't think you asked, you, you asked me that. about challenges. Oh, go ahead. sorry. We're talking over each other. You're fine. Go ahead. We, get, we must have a time lag. Um, yeah, that you you asked. We we started this whole conversation off with challenges, and 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 you said, hey, because we have the shots of Josh and Victoria and Royce in the beginning doing the project Twinkle Star, Twinkle Toes, Twinkle Star, Twinkle Star, um, and then I guess there's the guy in the back and communications. What's the actor's name? Clay. Clay, that's right, Clay. So Clay's in the background. He's just looking on. You know, he's got his earpiece, earpiece. And uh, and you said, hey, when you put Jill on the bridge, can you put Clay in there somehow so it kind of ties in? I'm like, I don't think so. It's like Josh is moving in front of him, and then you're there, and he's handing over Royce. And blah. so I look back at the footage, and there was about five seconds before um, before Josh comes into frame where he's just he's kind of sitting there, you know, like this or whatever, just looking. Um, so I'm like, okay, let's grab that. Slow it down just a tiny bit so I have some breathing room. Get a pl I got a pl I got a plate of the bridge, I think from <coughs> when we shot a, a walkthrough on, on Ray's sets, that neutral zone. So I got a set of that, a shot of that, which was not locked down, but I managed to image stabilize that. So you had the buttons blinking and stuff. Because if it was a still, it wouldn't be as good, you know. So, so we got a plate, and then we got the shot of clay that I had to reverse, but you don't really notice that. And then to cover the seam, you know, I matched the lighting, I matched the color, color grading, and then to cover the seam, there's Jill in her seat, and it and it actually free and 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 what she's saying she says something and then right when she finishes what she's saying clay does this and then turns around to his console so it was perfect you know uh, action matching and um so that was i'm like there you go we we did it i didn't think we could do that but we we did it so and then there's the other shot with um it was another angle over her uh, to her left her right um it's another shot of Ray's set, but the focus was on the background. <clears throat> so the chair I was going to put her on the chair, yeah, but the chair was fuzzy, out of focus, because the focus was back here. I probably should have made here, but back here, less focus. But anyway, um, so putting her in here, which I think that I think that green screen isn't isn't too bad on that shot, um, and the lighting and stuff. But the chair was terribly out of focus. You know what I mean? So, so here's like, here's the person in focus. Here's the chair she's sitting on, totally out of focus. So I'm like, all right. So I actually, actually went and got, here's where the layers come in. I actually went and got a chair, a captain's chair, cut the back out, angled it properly, put it between the plate and, and Jill, and just, you know, covered the out of focus chair. And boom. Anybody interested in this, really? Anyway, I, this is the stuff that I get off on. These little things that nobody will ever fucking notice. That that's just like, can you do this? Yeah. So I don't. That's that's why I keep keep well, coming that's, back. That's, 
that's part of the movie magic. Um, and, yeah. and one of the things, like, again, that makes the world feel lived in. Like, you don't notice that you need it until it's not there. You know, because, mm-hmm. like, having Lee on the bridge with Spangler, um, to me, that's important. Um, and, and and if we wouldn't have got it, okay, that's not a big deal. But we've seen so many, especially in my films, of a static shot of, okay, Menard's on the bridge and it's from a front point of view and it's, okay, he's right here. And, and it's like, that's, it's very boring. And, and it's, I mean, in a crunch, I mean, yes, do it. Especially if you're on the view screen, that's yeah. yeah, fine. But like this, especially for the visual effect you gave us for, um, uh, the ion storm, which I love oh. that effect, especially how the ship just looks like it's getting fun. tossed about. It reminded <clears throat> me of how modern day, uh, you know, cruise boats or whatever, you know, when they get tossed about in, in, a, in, a, in a storm, like it really makes you feel like, hey, even though we're in space, even though we got our shit together, there's still things out there that we can't control and we've got to shut our stuff off. Otherwise it's going to affect everything. So, Hey guys, Mm -hmm. we kind of got to buckle down the hatches and ride this thing through. And I love the fact that just the sound effects and the scope of this thing. And, you know, it just, it, it feels very dangerous. And I love the fact that here Spangler is with Lee on the bridge and they're like, you know, they're calling out to the crew saying, all right, guys, buckle down. You know, we, we, you know, it's, it's the equipment, you know, to me, it reminded me of, of what they described as in like the, the, you know, the old days when, you know, they'd have to get under their desks to prepare for the atomic bomb blast. Duck, you know. duck and cover. Yeah. To me, that's what it just reminded me of. Um, and it's one of those things where, you know, and, and, and you created the sense of it felt like we've prepared for stuff like this. And we've not done it, but we've prepared for this. So, okay, let's do our thing, you know. Um, and I, I really liked that because, you know, to me, it was just a way to have a cameo. But you made it so much more. You know, to me, it was, you know, we could have easily had the person on the monitor or just over the intercom. But you went that step further and said, let's put him on. Let's have him on the bridge. Let's do let's this. Put him on there. Yeah. 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 That was so, important. Yeah. 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 And the, so, and, the, and the ion storm, I had no idea what I was going to do there. That was another, so like, you can't, you know, I'm not going to go on Envato or ISOC and go, ion storm, thank you. Um, so that, that was a, a lot of, uh, a lot more layering st- storms and kind of horizontally blurring storm clouds erupting so it didn't look like just storm clouds. Um, and uh, the stars in the background out of focus. And yeah, again, a lot of layering. Also the same with the sound effects and the I, I will say this. I I was more impressed with this storm than I was with the, the storms in Star Trek V when they go see God. So like Oh yeah. my yeah, yeah. Brand <laughs> Ferns. Uh, oh, that was uh, Yeah, yeah. Nice. Not so good. So um but that's the funny well, thing, isn't it? I mean, we have technology now right here in our home offices that they didn't have in nineteen eighty nine, you know. Yeah. Um but um but also, I think to sell that, this again, my limited CGI uh, attempts, efforts, is to to have the sh- the ship is actually is being hit with light. The light is changing, so it's not just a static shot of the ship and all everything going on around it. There there is lighting changing on the ship as well. So hopefully, if I timed it right, there's a lightning thing. Then boom, you know, it, it um, you see the light change, and it's blue light over here, and it's white light over there. And then, like you said, the rocking, you know, like in the old show, they would have just gone like that, you know, in, 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 in camera or in post. But um, but to see the actual, you know, actually pitch and yaw kind of brings a, a massiveness yeah. to it, a weight yeah. to it. Yeah. I did the well, same I, in. Um... <laughs> that I love. I love the fact that they that, that you did that, because, again, like like I said, it. it it reminds you of of those 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 boats that are at sea um, when, when they get tossed in the waves, you know, um, about how you know we think we have shit under control, but like we're very small, and that's that's what this like it really it, it really puts shit in perspective of like all right, <laughs> gotta handle business, you know. When she says, "All right, guys, shut everything off," you know, even yeah. personal limit limit personal like, devices. Yeah, like that, that, you know, like it kind of makes you wonder, like, wait, why? 
you know, like what, what, what's going, like what, like, cause you never heard that before, and 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 whatever, you know. Go ahead. And it's good because it, because there's a callback to that, you know. When Quincy, you know, we go into the tilted world, and Quincy just watches, you know, Captain sit there, and then he's on the communicator, and it's going. Uh, he's all, well, I guess this, I guess we're in the limit personal devices phase now, you know, so it wasn't just a throwaway line. It, it actually meant something going forth, you know. Well, um, in the real world, reason why I had that was because I didn't think that, 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 uh, you know, I'd be able to get the, the, I always try to write around my limitations and I didn't think I'd be able to get the person who is original supposed to do it, Rankin, for very many lines. So I always try to write around that. So that's why I was like, well, I could do it for one scene, but. I don't think he'd come back for a second. So, okay, I'm going to write this. So again, like I wrote that originally there, it wouldn't have been there if I knew it was going to be Spangler. Cause I'd be like, Oh, I'll just have them talk. But you know, so I put that yeah. in there for that, you know, so, um, but it but it need, felt, yeah, and it needed, you know, it yeah. was fine without that. We'd already talked to her. We already found out what's going on. It wasn't really any more info. She could have gone, well, we're still being rocked around. Well, we know that we can see it, you know, it's visually right. represented. Right. So um, right. I think just, you know, and then and then turning that line about um, uh, limit personal devices, turning it into a joke there um, is is great. A little levity before right. it gets fucking deep. Yeah. <clears throat> Levitivity, right, right. Well, it, we're almost at the hour and a half mark, man. I think we're gonna have to call it good here, and then uh, have you back next time and uh, talk about the next time I don't use the tripod on a film for you. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> boy, I, so, uh, um, so for i have your description uh or I, I have the link to your facebook in the description um is uh -huh. there is there another way people can reach you if they want to or or follow your work yeah yeah um do the um i would i would encourage everybody to go check out um mr raygon.com yeah because we're working on a we're working on a big coffee table book about the history of vintage toy ray guns from like the 30s to the 70s. Uh, sprinkled in there, seasoned in there, are our um, original pinup photography of Space Girls featuring a lot of the guns from the collection. Uh, working on that, um, so MrRayGun.com, and you can contact us through there through that the on the contacts page. Um, also on Instagram, we are uh, Mr. Raygun LLC. Mr. Reagan was already taken. So Mr. Reagan LLC on Instagram, Instagram. And uh, yeah, check out some of, uh, we've got, we tease some of the pages in the book so you can kind of see what the flavor we're going for. There's some pinup, pinup art. There's some behind the scenes. There's a few videos, um, bit of everything there. I, that's, that's a good place to find us. Um, so yeah, between Facebook, my personal Facebook, Instagram, Mr. Um, I think you uh, have it covered. Okay, good deal. All right, and then uh, for anyone interested, um, I do have in the description below also um, a the GoFundMe link to uh, Martin Bennett, who recently had, had uh, leg surgery. He, um, I, I won't go into too much detail for it. Um, it's all the description is in the GoFundMe, um, but he did lose his leg, um, so he's on the road to recovery for all of that. So. Um, if you're interested, he plays uh, the character of Ruiz in the Constar Chronicles. Um, oh, but, but uh, he's he's part of the Constar family. So if you are interested in um, helping him get back on his feet, um, I know he'd be immensely grateful. Um, and you know, us us geeks, you know, we kind of take care of our own. So you know, even if you can't uh, donate, you know, share the link. Uh, maybe someone out there can. Um, but uh, I know he'd love the help so uh but on that note we uh we will um end this and then we will talk to you next time jason all right all right Vance. good times good times uh keep it going thank you thank you for everything you've done for me uh uh thank you for everything you've done for fan films in general uh, you've made a couple of damn good films with the 11th hour with tilt to world uh in particular um those two i think are are two fan favorites uh at least i, I maybe maybe i'm overstepping on tilt to world i think that one's going to be a a fan favorite i know 11th hour is for a lot of people um i think yeah tilt -to -world I'm, I'm thrilled about different. that yeah yeah, yeah I, I like that i like that um very proud of that one um but uh yeah thanks i'm, I'm working with greg 
your buddy Greg, who also is a great editor on your films, uh, working with him on oh, some yeah. stuff. And um, yeah, in fact, I've I've got to go now and work on that. Oh look, look, here's a tease. Here's a tease for that. <coughs> yeah, huh? You like that? I, I feel like this. I feel like this wig with that sexy dance you were doing earlier is. I, I feel like you're gonna have that OnlyFans, you know, link before you know it. So, Ray I'm guns have an only new Instagram. <laughs> whole new Instagram. No, I, I, he's got me playing a. He's, he's got me playing a demon hunter. So I wanted to look completely different. He's kind of got a retro vibe. Austin Powers, Our Man, Flint, Matt Helm, James Bondy, kind of uh, the Avengers, the original, not the Marvel. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm going all out on this and just going camp as hell, you know, so look forward to that. <laughs> right on. Well, everybody at home, thank you for, uh, stopping by and, uh, Jason again, uh, thank you for everything you do. And, um, I know I, I know, I know, uh, I know we'll be working together again in the future. So, uh, mm -hmm. all right guys, keep on geeking on.